Shalom YouTube, this is Chad with Return of the Remnant Ministry. I hope you're having a blessed day. I thought today I would uh, do a short teaching. I promise you it will be short today. Uh, titled, The Return of Messiah Yeshua in Revelation 19 is not, I say again, is not the same as his coming that he talks about in Matthew 24. And I'm going to go through several scriptures today to show you there is a difference between what Yeshua does in Matthew 24, what he says to his disciples in Matthew 24, and what he does in Revelation 19. Now before I go ahead and get started on this, I just want to give a little quick disclaimer. During this teaching, it's probably going to seem like somehow I'm promoting a pre-trib rapture doctrine, but I assure you, I am not. I believe that the book of Revelation shows us that the end time believers will go through the tribulation. We, we see this in seal number five. But believers are not destined to Yahweh's wrath. And I'll go to that. Paul tells us that in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 9 and 10. It says, For God, or for Elohim, has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Messiah Yeshua, okay, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So right there, we see we're not destined to Yahweh's wrath. And also, if you read your Bible, you'll find that there are patterns where we see that the Father judges and corrects his people first, and then he deals with the other nations one perfect example of that is the is the sin of Baal Peor in the Torah. In the book of Numbers, you see that the sin of Baal Peor, where the Midianites are frolicking, if you will, with the children of Israel. And what does God do first? He first brings forth wrath upon the Israelites. And then later, once that's taken care of, then he says, now go strike the Midianites. Uh, we also see this several times in the book of Judges and, and other areas in the Bible. So we see a pattern of that. And it's nothing different than what we're going to see uh, in the book of Revelation. But let's go ahead and let's start off and read Matthew chapter 24 for context here. So I'm going to read... Yeah, I'm going to read a few verses here, so bear with me. <clears throat> it says, And Yeshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua said unto them, See ye, Do you not see all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming? And not to, not to uh, get too ahead of myself, but that word for coming is parousia. Okay, the parousia. Okay, that's a hint. What should be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in diverse places. All these things are beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all the nations for my name's sake. And there's perfect seal 5 right there. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, let the reader understand, then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him who is in the field return back to take his clothes. 
and woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. Seal number five. That's just my paraphrasing there. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor no, nor shall ever be. And except those days be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, do not believe it. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if you shall say, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, do not go forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming, parousia, the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation, after seal five of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn... Okay, so I think... So then he, he gives a, a, a parable here, but then I'm going to scroll down just to save time. But of that day, so the day of his coming, Yeshua tells us, that day and hour, no, nobody knows, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So not even Yeshua, only my Father in heaven, his Father, under, knows when that day is going to be. And if you understand... Um, uh, ancient Near East weddings, primarily in the Galilean region, it was the father who sent his son to get his bride. When 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 a man and woman were betrothed, the father would determine the day and the hour for his son to go get his bride. I find it very very interesting. There's you can do some research on it, but but anyway, so this this is bride terminology. Um, I'm going to continue here and then I'll make a couple comments. So again, the day and the hour, nobody knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So even Yeshua does not know. But as the days of Noah, how, but as how the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For it is in, that, in those days there, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until when the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So anyway, I want to just read that. So I'm going to ask a question here. In Matthew 24, as you're reading it, who was Yeshua talking to? Was he talking to everybody that was there? No. It was only to his disciples, a.k.a. his bride or those that are believers in him. And remember again, as I said before, believers are not destined to Yahweh's wrath. So keep keep those things in mind because it's going to help us as we get into certain parts of the teaching here. But primarily what we just read about right there in Matthew 24 were the first six seals of Revelation. If you take a look at Revelation chapter 6 through chapter 8, you're basically seeing the first seven seals. Uh, those seven seals line up here with what Yeshua is talking about in Matthew 24 to his bride. <clears throat> now, let's go to Revelation 19. Because many people believe that this is one and the same event. And I'm hoping today to be able to, without charts and everything, I just didn't have time to put together a bunch of PowerPoint charts, but hopefully uh, I can weave this together in such a way that you'll see 
that what Yeshua is saying in Matthew 24 of his coming is not the same as this return that he is going to do in Revelation 19. So, now after these things, these things being the trumpets and bold judgments, it says, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of of the throne saying praise be to our God all you his servants and you that fear him both small and great and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the Lord God and who is an omnipotent reigns let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at my feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren that have the testimony of Yeshua. Worship God, for the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed, clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth, out of Yeshua's mouth, goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of El Shaddai, or of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So, what differences can we get from these two events? Which I believe... Are not the same event. If we take a look in Matthew, Yeshua is sitting on the throne. And I'm going to go back into Matthew just so you see it. And I'm going to kind of cheat just a little bit. I'm going to do Matthew 24, 25, and 26, but it's it's all this talk that he has with his disciples, so it's all one and the same. But Matthew 25, 31. says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. Nothing here about riding on a red horse, smiting the nations, uh, his garments dipped in blood. Um, I'll show you another place, Matthew 26. I believe all 64, I think, and get them mixed up. And Yeshua tells the high priest, he even tells his high priest before he gets crucified. 
He says unto the high priest, You have said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. But now if we go to Revelation 19, Yeshua is not on the throne here. He's riding a white horse. And when does this happen? Again, after these things. What things? After the trumpet and bold judgments. Brothers and sisters, if we are believers in Messiah and we either are beheaded for our testimony or somehow make it through the great tribulation of seal five, we are not on the earth at this time. He is going to gather us. He is going to gather us up. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, so just hold hold on for a minute here. Um, we also see in Revelation 19 that his garment is stained in blood. It's red. It's stained in blood. We don't see any of that in Matthew 24 and Luke chapter 21 or in Mark chapter 13 or in, in uh, Matthew 25 or 26. We don't see any of that. We do see this being red, his, his garment stained in blood, because of a prophecy in Isaiah chapter 63. And in Isaiah chapter 63, speaking of Yeshua, it says, Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore are you red in your apparel and your garments like him that treads in the wine fat? And this is Yeshua speaking. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem is come. Isn't that interesting? Doesn't that also line up with Isaiah 61? Do you remember when Yeshua, in, when he was in Nazareth, was handed the, the scroll of Isaiah, and he read, The Spirit of Yahweh Elohim is upon me, because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim an acceptable year of Yahweh. And he ends it here, doesn't he? He ends it. He doesn't give the second half, because his first coming wasn't to judge his first coming was to save. Because in the ancient Near East, in order to have a kingdom, you need three things. You need to have servants, you need to have land, and you need to have a king. And so the kingdom has not was not yet fully realized at this point. If Yeshua came back to judge, he'd have no one in his kingdom. He had to die for the salvation of the world and those who you know, who believe in him and are saved by by the blood of the Lamb in order to be in his kingdom. So he had to come the first time to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and to do these things first before he comes back for the day of vengeance. Okay? Um, so what, what, what I'm trying to get at here is in Matthew 24, Yeshua is speaking of only what's going to happen to his bride. To those that believe in him whereas when we read in matthew we get we're getting to a or when we as we read in revelation when we get to the point of revelation 19 we are starting to see now that whoever is left on the earth when yeshua returns revelation 19 are not believers they're the rest of the world they're just like during the days of 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 uh, noah as yeshua tells us here um, I, mean, I think I've got that on here, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so let's let's just go ahead and continue here. So again, in Matthew, there's no mention of the trumpet and bowl judgments. He's only discussing what I believe are the first six seals that we find out later in Revelation. He's giving them to his bride because that's all they need to know. That's all we that's all we really need to know. Many people go in and we we want to look at the whole book of Revelation, which I think is good. I think that's great. But if you're a believer in Yeshua, you should be concentrating on the seals that he is going to open until he comes to get us and to take us home. That is the most important part 
of all revelation. And then the second biggest part is we know that in the end, the Father wins. You know, Satan's going to pour out his wrath. He's going to have a time of pouring out his wrath on believers. And just like I said before, God kind of uh, corrects his people first before he brings forth judgment on the rest of mankind. And that's what we're seeing in Revelation as well. Uh, and if you take a look at the events that Yeshua describes to his disciples in Matthew 24, you can really see how they line up almost exactly as they're described in order in Revelation chapter 6 through 8. All, the, all seven seals... Now, another big difference is the gathering of the saints. And when, we're, when we were reading Matthew uh, chapter 24, it, that all talks about Yeshua returning to gather the saints. And we see this also in Revelation 14. Revelation 14, in verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints, there are those that keep the commandments of Elohim and the testimony of Yeshua. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. Okay, this is obviously Yeshua. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. So here Yeshua is reaping the saints. Also, Revelation 7, after the, after the sixth seal, says after these things, if you go, I'll go back for context. In Revelation 6, Towards the end, it says, when he opened the sixth seal, a bunch of things happened. Because I, I don't want to get into that yet, because that's another, another thing I'm going to talk about. And after that sixth seal, it says, after these things, we're, he, there's a, the 144,000 are sealed. 12,000 out of each of the tribes of Israel of the descendants of Israel. And then it says after that, it says, after those were sealed, it says in Revelation 7, verse 9, after this, the sealing of the 144,000s, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. There's your there's your resurrection right there, people. Believe it or not, but that is the gathering of the saints. So we see this in Revelation 14. We see this in Revelation 7. All of this happens before Revelation 19, when Yeshua returns on the white horse. Uh, if we go to Revelation 19... We see here that Revelation 19, 19, I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And his army is all wearing white robes, the white robes of the resurrection, the 144,000, all that, are, that died in Christ, all that were in the heavens with him. So at that time, all believers are with Yeshua, riding with him as, as he descends to earth to fight the beast, or a.k.a. the Antichrist, the false prophet and his armies. And we see what happens here, that the Antichrist and false prophet are thrown alive into the lake of brimstone and fire. And this happens after the trumpets and the bowl, and the bowl judgments. This is at the close to the end, before the millennial kingdom. And it only makes sense... That believers are already with Yeshua in heaven before we ride with him to fight the Antichrist and his armies. Another one we can look at. Um, let's go to Revelation. 
Let's first go to Matthew, sorry. Let's first go to Matthew 24. Does Yeshua know when he's coming? Again, remember I was saying this this uh, betrothal, this when the bridegroom leaves to go get his bride, it's the father that gives him the time and hour when to go get his bride. And here, Matthew 24, 36, again, Yeshua says, But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And there's another place, I think, maybe Luke 21, but I'm not to save time. You'll have to go look in Luke 21, but it's, it says not even the Son of Man, but the Father only. So, he doesn't know when he's coming. I do believe he knows when he's returning on the white on the white horse, because you know what? If we go to uh, Revelation sixteen, ah, I get that screwed up. Let me get here. I'm using eSword right now. It's a wonderful little program. Most people know about it, but if you don't, I highly encourage you to go online and download eSword for your desktop, for your laptop, and it has got several different scriptures as a wonderful tool to use so in Revelation 16 this here is um, we're now in the bold judgments I believe and we're in the sixth sixth vial I think and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Or really, it's it's in the mount. It's heart. It's the mount of decision. It's it's not the area over by Megiddo. Um, I may do another teaching on that. It's a grammatical uh, issue here. But what we see is how do they know? When this battle is going to take place, they they know. I believe Satan knows when the return of Yeshua with the armies is going to happen, and I know that I believe that Yeshua knows when he's going to be coming with all the saints in Revelation 19. And that is a different event than the parousia of Matthew chapter 24 when he comes to get his bride. Uh, we also know that in Matthew 24, let's go to Matthew 24 again. If we take a look at Matthew 24, when he comes to get his bride, immediate, immediately after the tribulation, again, seal five, and yes, we will go through it. Those that are still alive will go through it. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And it says that just as lightning flashes from the east to the west, so shall the Son of Man come. And every eye is going to see. Well, that's not the same as Revelation 19. We don't see that. It does line up perfectly, though. What I just read to you lines up perfectly with Revelation chapter 6 at the sixth seal. Let's read it. Starting in verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Remember, Yeshua is opening these seals. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. Check. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Check. And the moon became as blood. Check. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. 
check, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven depart as a scroll and is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains of mighty men, and every bomb and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall abide, and who shall be able to stand? See, they don't know. The peoples of the earth, who are not the bride, are thinking that his wrath has come. It hasn't totally come yet. It hasn't totally come yet. He came to get his bride and to bring it back. And when we start reading the trumpets, I believe the trumpets are the wrath of God. He is going to pour that out on the ungodly. And we don't see any of this, any of this stuff here that Yeshua described in Matthew 24 that lines up perfectly here in Revelation 6, speaking of the sixth seal. You don't see any of that in the return of Yeshua on the white horse in Revelation 19. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I think I'll say, just for sake of time, because like I said, I want to keep it short. And I promised you I would. Um, Yeshua's coming, and in Greek, the coming is parousia. And it is found in several places in the Brit Hadashah, in the Renewed Covenant, New Testament, if you will. If we go to Matthew 24, I'm going to give you two places. Uh, I'm going to go Matthew 24, 3. The disciples, as Yeshua sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples, his bride, the believers, came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming, your parousia? And also the end of the world. And he goes through and describes this. And then he culminates it in verse 27 when he says, For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall the coming, the parousia of the Son of Man be. If we go to Revelation 19, just for sake of time, I'm not going to go there. You can go there yourself. Revelation 19, there is no word of parousia. Of his coming, he's just returning. After he's judged Edom and his 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 garments are stained in blood, uh, and the, when it says a year of recompense and a day of judgment, uh, we know in Torah when a man takes a wife, he should not go to battle for one year. Uh, and I believe that Yeshua will be with his bride for one year when the Father pours out his wrath upon the ungodly on the earth. And then the culmination of that, there will be a day when he will send his son, Yeshua, along with the saints, of that day of vengeance, as we read about in Revelation 19. So, uh, again, I know there's a lot more differences here that I didn't list. I hope it was enough to at least, if it didn't convince you, I pray that it will allow you to go in and study the word and start looking at these things that I talked about. Um, please feel free to comment on this uh, and add anything else that you'd like, uh, anything else that you find anyway that it's in the Word of God. But I just hope uh, this was a good teaching to you. And until we meet again, blessings and shalom.